Welcome to the Chelsea Fans Channel. I'm sure that we are all aware of John Obi McKell's recent comments. He has said that he will leave Chelsea if he isn't in the first team. Very interested to hear what you guys think about that because part of me thinks that you know you should stay, fight for your team, you shouldn't simply jump ship. But equally, he's 28, he needs to be playing first team football. So you, there are two sides to that coin. Um, what I've been fortunate enough to do is get my friend uh, Mohammed, who works at Squawker, on to have a little chat with us about who he thinks will fit into the Conte philosophy and who he thinks will have to leave. Mohammed, thank you so much for joining us. Much for pleasure. In the description here, there is a link to the article that Mohammed wrote about this. It's really, really good. Make sure that you check it out. Um, Mohammed, what do you think about Mikel? Do you feel like he is uh, on his last legs for Chelsea? He's been there for a long time. He's won a lot of things. He's, he's at times played very well, but he's not necessarily the kind of midfielder that Conte likes because he's a very traditional, or he's become a very traditional defensive midfielder under Mourinho's guidance, obviously. And Antonio Conte prefers a more rounded skill set in his midfielders. So players that like to, that can defend, but like to pass, like to run. Uh, players like Claudio Marchisio, who he brought through at Juventus. Uh, Paul Pogba was a, was a famous uh, player under him. Obviously, he really, really took his game to a whole new level. Um, you know, and Arturo Vidal, who, of course, his famous comments about Vidal was that he'd, uh, he'd sign Vidal for all his teams. So it's that kind of player that he polite, he prefers to the the more robust, standard, physical defensive midfielder that Mikel is. I see. So you have a really good grasp on the kind of manager that Conte is. According to you there, you think that Mikel could be struggling because if he likes players like Pogba, players like Vidal, they seem to be players who do it all, don't they? Whereas Mikel is more of a specialist. Is that the kind of player he likes? Players who cover all sorts of angles in the midfield? Exactly. And I think the one player at Chelsea who's brilliantly set up to do that is Nemanja Matic. I mean, for the longest time, Matic has been regarded as a holding midfielder. But if you ever watch him play, he's so dynamic in his runs from box to box and his runs down the left flank when he, well, I mean, when he was playing well, especially under Mourinho. So I think he would actually be well-pressed to... Uh, to really excel for, for Conte should he become the Chelsea manager. That's really interesting because a lot of people have suggested that Matic could actually be one of the players that will leave. You think that there could actually be some hope for him? I think there's a lot of hope for him. I think he's exactly the kind of player that uh, Conte would like. He's physical, he's technical, he's, he's, and he's just his style is perfectly Conte-esque, if you will. Uh, energetic box-to-box -box player, covers ground, makes tackles, scores goals. I mean, does, just does everything, really. And I think in the right kind of system, aka Conte's, he could be phenomenal for Chelsea. That's really interesting. So with this understanding that you have of Conte and the way that he likes to manage, are there any other players at Chelsea who you think could be struggling to get into a Conte side? Um, there are a few. Actually, Chelsea's uh, squad is quite well made up and well prepared for Conte. There's a lot of players who could fit into his style. He tends to play, I mean, he started off at Juventus wanting to play 4-2-4, but that's not really plausible yeah. with elite players. It's very difficult. Um, so he then, he, then he switched to a 4-3-3, but that wasn't really working either. And what he settled on eventually was a 3-5-2, a which is everyone's now known as that. He, and he plays it with Italy as well now, you know, where he put Pirlo at the base of midfield and he had uh, um, Vidal and then Marquisio or Pogba either side of him and it was a phenomenal formation and I think uh, if you look at that and then you look at now at Italy he's adjusted to maybe playing a bit of a 4-4-2 but either way his premier thing is two strikers right. and having two strikers means that a number 10 like Oscar who is a phenomenal player you know, there can be no question about his ability may find himself struggling to get to the side and given that his ex uh, Conte's ex team Juventus have shown a, repeatedly shown a great interest in Oscar I think he could be that he could be sold to maybe help bolster, bolster the coffers to bring in new talent you know right so if he's going to if we think that he's going to play two up front and I think it's fair to assume that that is going to be what he's done because that seems to be the paradigm that he subscribes to up until this point yeah. do you feel like Chelsea yeah. are therefore going to I can see what you mean about Oscar, and I don't think there'd be too... You know, I've always rated Oscar very highly, but I get a lot of grief on this channel for the support that I give him. A lot of <laughs> Chelsea a lot of Chelsea fans would be happy to see him leave. If he leaves and what? therefore you know, brings in some money, what sort yes. of player do you think Conte will try and sign? Do you feel like we will be trying to play two up front? I do. I, I think that's definitely... If you look at the way Conte's played, uh, managed sorry, for Juventus and for Italy, he tends to like to have two forwards up front. So Tevez... He was a big fan of obviously Juventus um, and uh, Italy. Sorry, he was Pele, uh, Pella. Sorry, yeah. and he has um, uh, Ed Air, and yeah, he likes to push push the uh, opponent back with two forwards. 
And I think what Chelsea, Diego Costa, Diego Costa has done well in his lone striker role. You know, he's really worked hard for it. But ultimately, uh, his, his breakthrough season, if you will, came playing in a forward two with Radamel Falcao at, at Atletico Madrid. Now, the Falcao we've seen at Chelsea is not the same guy. But I think, uh, you know, if Chelsea were to sign another striker, uh, say Simone Zaza from Juventus or, I mean, you know, being very ambitious, Gonzalo Higuain from Napoli, I think you could see Diego Costa and that other striker pair up very well in a Conte kind of system. Costa and, say, Higuain would be a wonderful combination, don't you think? I think it would be fantastic. I think Higuain is a real goal-getter and a, and a really technical, refined player, whereas Costa's a, Costa can be at, be at times a battering ram. And, and I think with his... He also tends to roam out of the central area, Costa, looking for the ball, moving into wide channels, which when you're playing as the sole striker is genuinely not a good idea it's because of course then there's no one in the box but I think if Higuain if you're playing in a front two then it gives Costa the license to roam a bit and find space wide or deep and then that means there'll always be a presence Higuain in the box it could be a very useful partnership it would probably spell the end for Pedro who's the third player I think would struggle at Chelsea Really? So, uh, so from the, from the this, is, this is so interesting Mohamed thank you so much for coming on and talking to us about this so you think that Applying the Chelsea squad to Conte's system. So far, John Obi yeah. Mikel could be yes. surplus to requirements. You think that yes. um, Oscar could also be surplus to requirements, and also Pedro. I think yes, because I think Pedro is. Uh, I mean, he's best in the wide forward in the four three three. Now, I mean, it could be that Conte comes in and decides, okay, the Premier League is this kind of league. I have to play four three three. I don't think that's going to happen, but it could do. And then Pedro would probably thrive but given uh the 352 and the the 442 or 424 if you want to call it that pedro doesn't really have a spot in the side because he's not a striker no. and he's not a wide midfielder so uh and let's be perfectly honest as well playing for chelsea this season pedro has often looked like he's looked like a player who for his entire career has been told exactly where to stand where to run who to pass to and now he's been thrust into a team where he basically they say, go on, just go and play. Mm. And he looks lost. He looks overwhelmed by the pressure, by the options. And at times just, uh, he's nowhere near, it's a shadow of the player he was at Barcelona, which is strange because there's really, he's now one of the main guys at Chelsea. He should have, he should be thriving, but he's not. So right. I think he could, and you, you could probably, because of his reputation, because of his ability, he's going to go to the Euros in the summer. So, I think he's the kind of player Chelsea could, again, like Oscar, could sell to make a fair bit of money, which would then fund incoming arrivals. Right. Well, this is, this is so interesting. There's something else I have to ask you. Because of your understanding of the yes. way that Conte likes to do things, I think yeah. most Chelsea fans, the players that we've mentioned so far, Oscar, Mikel and Pedro, some will be yes. you know, sad to see him leave if it were to happen. But I think we, yes. would all, we would all be able to make our peace with that, depending on what went on. Something that Chelsea fans have not been able to make our peace with is the fact that John Terry, they've basically said that John Terry will not be playing for Chelsea next season. Yeah. Applying your logic to Conte and your knowledge of Conte, can you see a world in which Chelsea hold on to their greatest ever captain? I think so. I think I, I, in fact, I would be surprised if, if <laughs> I would be surprised if, if Terry isn't at Chelsea next season because I think while he's he's clearly declining as a player, um, what he is and what no one has ever been able to question him, regardless of his ethical yes. uh, behaviour or his his form decline, is he's a fantastic leader. Absolutely. He's a genuinely great leader of men. Uh, has been since, I mean, since you remember reading the stories about what he would do when Mourinho first showed up, when he would organise the PlayStation tournaments to get the, get the squad together. Yep. This is this is, two, this is 11 years ago now. And it seems like a small thing, but it really helped gel what could have been a, just a disparate squad of mercenaries into a real team almost overnight. Won the league in his first two seasons under Mourinho. So uh, I think Conte, with his love of experienced players would definitely look to retain John Terry. You look at um, his Juventus side, Pirlo was a big factor in that side. Chiellini was a big factor. Gian Luigi Buffon, he brought Pirlo in as an old player and made him 31 years old, I think he was at the time, yeah. and made him the centrepiece of his side. Right. So Conte's not opposed to experience. He understands the value of it, as a lot of Italian coaches do. And I think if you look at the Chelsea team, now that Czech has gone, besides Branislav Ivanovic, there's no one really anywhere close to having the experience Terry has. 19 years he's been playing at Chelsea. Yeah. So <laughs> it's a long time. I think uh, even if he won't play that much, even if he just plays 20 games a season, 
you know, and you'll see you'll see Kurt Zuma, Matt Miazga, um, you know, and Branislav Ivanovic, I think will play well. I think Nathan Aki could do well under yeah. under Conte with his, with his ability to play in uh, centre back and left back, you know, in a back three. Mm-hmm. I think, uh, but I think John Terry has a massive part to play at Chelsea under. Antonio Conte, uh, given his leadership abilities. That quote that you just said there, John Terry has a massive part to play under Antonio Conte. It's the <laughs> stuff I'm dreaming of. I'm thinking that you know Conte is a shrewd individual who must, he, surely he would understand that he wouldn't want to be the guy to come in and clear out Chelsea's captain. Surely he would want to it, hold on to that, just for the fans' perspective, if nothing else. Just from the fans? Yeah, well, I mean, that's a great way to get the fans on the side. No, no, no. The board has said he's going, but no, 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 I'm saying he's staying because I need John Terry. Immediately, the fans love him. That, that probably buys him a season of whatever kind of football. Yes. And I mean, he won't, be in, he won't be in Europe next year, so I think that would buy him an enormous amount of goodwill just to get Terry on side because Terry is, you know, I mean, Terry is John Terry. Yes. He's one of the three greatest, three greatest players in the history of Chelsea Football Club. I think it's it would be kind of I mean you look at the way that uh, lost much struggle look at whether Frank Lampard was allowed to allowed to leave I don't think that reflected very well on uh, Jose Mourinho and the management you know no definitely and not think... we never got to say goodbye to Frank Lampard we we got to say goodbye to him when he was in a City shirt we didn't he didn't get a testimony yeah. we got nothing exactly and you look at you compare that to if Conte were to were to keep John Terry how how much more popular he'd be then and again I think it would work on a football level as well because I think the leadership he has you've got Zuma you've got Miazga you could then Aki young defenders all of them young defenders you need you need a leader you need a mentor to guide them teach them how to be professionals how to how to to know how to win to know what to do to win you know yeah. and I think Gary Cahill was a good defender but Gary Cahill is not a leader Gary Cahill is not the kind of guy who's going to teach Kurt Zuma what it is to be a winner yes. going to teach Matt Miazga what it is to be a winner I think John Terry is exactly that man and so I think he's uh, I would be very surprised if Antonio Conte allowed him to leave it's the stuff of dreams, Mohammed. Thank you so much for coming on and talking to us. Really, really appreciate so your better. insight there. And guys, uh, make sure that you check out Squawker on Twitter and on on, uh, on their homepage. It's in the description below. Really are a great bunch of lads over there. Mohammed, thanks again. And please come and speak to us again soon. I'm sure I will. I'll be glad to come back, my friend. Well, Have a good time. Cheers. All the best, mate. See you soon. Welcome to the Chelsea Fans Channel. It has been too long. I have missed you guys. I've been in Berlin with the Football Republic. I had a fantastic time. It's such a great channel. Make sure that you click up here right now to see the video that we made because it was such a good laugh. We were at the Germany-England...